So this is a case of Marfan syndrome in a 23-year-old patient um, with a severely subluxed microspherophagic lens. Now, the standard of care really uh, should now be to um, save the bag here and not to disturb the vitreous, and that is the aim of the exercise here. Although there's some zonular loss in Fairly, and you can see the anterior hyoid, um, the aim here is to try and do the procedure without disturbing the vitreous. Now, we're using some uh, dispersive viscoelastic here to push the anterior hyaloid back um, with the use of Helon 5, which is a super cohesive agent, and this really helps to flatten the anterior capsule here, but also help with some viscomadriasis to really push the iris back in the uh, angle so that one is able to visualize more of the lens here. Because of the mobility of the lens, we're using a sharp uh, 25 gauge needle here to puncture the capsule. And the capsular axis is initiated with 25 gauge micro grasping forceps. And we really let the capsule tear in whichever direction it wants, and then we regain control. So here we're once again using a little bit more of the Helon 5 to. Uh, really gain access to the part of the lens that is uh, less easily visible so that we can complete the rexus as centrally as possible. A little bit of counter-traction with a second pair of micro-graspers here to help uh, propagate the rexus. And then we continue to tear the rexus uh, counterclockwise um, very gently um, and using additional uh, Helon 5 to really flatten the capsule and push the iris away a little bit further to uh, improve the visualization of the edge of the tear as we proceed with the capsular axis. It's very important here also to be um, mindful of the fact that this is a very young patient with an elastic capsule and so the risk of run out is also a little bit increased but as indicated the Helon 5 by flattening the capsule uh, helps to reduce this risk. But nevertheless, the rexus needs to be performed in a cautious manner because a tear out here can really uh, mean the difference between getting a lens in the bag and ending up having to uh, perform a scleral fixation. And that really is not ideal in a case like this. So we managed to fortunately uh, complete the rexus here and uh, we removed the capsule and we're now using some Helon 5 again to really expand the uh, periphery of the capsular bag in the area of the missing zonules. And you can see as we expand the bag, um, the um, capsular axis looks a lot more circular now and far less oval. We're now going to place some uh, standard iris uh, retractors here uh, to hold the edge of the capsular axis. Um, this allows us some uh, counter traction um, and we very gradually begin to move the capsular bag in this way uh, into a more central position. Now this is a clear crystalline lens um, and so we're going to um, essentially uh, use a INA handpiece to um, aspirate this out. There's no need for a uh, FACO probe here really um, as, as I've said the lens is very very soft and uh, easily uh, removed using an INA, INA handpiece uh, as can be seen uh, here. Once we've completed removal um, of the, the central uh, nuclear remnant um, the remainder of the cortex um, can also easily be removed using the INA handpiece the main caveat is here is really to have low flow settings and low levels of vacuum uh, just to ensure absolute control within the anterior segment. And before we remove our fake our IA handpiece, we just fill the eye with some viscoelastic and you can see the bag is nice and clear there. The next step is to um, fixate the bag um, to the scleral wall and we're going to use this um, our mid tension segment here to enable us to do this and we've removed the capsule hooks now now we're going to get the uh, segment into the uh, anterior chamber and get it set up for um, 
suturing to the sclera using Gore-Tex suture. We start off by uh, opening up the inferior conjunctiva. We uh, proceed with a little bit of cautery here to the sclera and then make a groove a couple of meter, millimeters back from the limbus. And this will be used to pass our um, uh, 25 gauge needle in order to uh, exteriorize the Gore-Tex suture. A little bit more viscote here to push back the anterior hyoid once again. And now we use a bent 25 gauge needle and create a track into the eye. And I like to then follow this up with a uh, micro grasper to uh, really allow us to um, control the exteriorization of the Gore-Tex. Um, I don't like to dock the needles into the, ne into the um, 25 gauge needle um, as I don't think this gives you enough control. So we then uh, remove the needles from the end of the Gore-Tex and we pass the uh, suture into the anterior chamber and we can pass it relatively easily uh, ab interno uh, through the eyelet of the um, capsular tension segment and place it just inferior to the iris um, here uh, near the point we've made our sclerotomy and then we can um, enter the eye through this sclerotomy and the 25 gauge micro graspers and easily grasp the uh, suture and exteriorize this um, through the sclerotomy uh, to uh, outside of the eye. We then take the second end of this suture again, place it into the anterior segment, and once again place it near using a hand-shaped technique, uh, using two micro graspers um, near the um, point at which we've made our second sclerotomy and once again, we um, grasp the end of the Gore-Tex suture using uh, our micro grasper. And uh, both ends are now exteriorized um, through the sclerotomies that we have fashioned inside this groove. The next step is to expand the capsular bag. And we have to now place the segment uh, carefully inside the capsular bag and using the dialing hook and as well as the micro graspers here is uh, very helpful um, and this has to be done very gently not to get being careful not to uh, create more zonular trauma. We then gradually increase the tension on the segment um, to try and centralize this very dislocated capsular bag um, and we use a slip knot here just to gradually increase the tension um, and this is a second knot here of the slip knot. Um, and we just increase the tension on the segment gradually to try and get this bag um, to become more central in the visual axis. The next step now is once again to fill the bag um, with some um, cohesive viscoelastic. This is normal, normal Helon Pro. And then we ratchet up the tension a little bit more again. And we're now going to place a capsular tension ring um, to augment uh, the degree of support to the capsular bag. And as the, seg as the capsular tension ring comes around, in this case it uh, catches just very slightly on the edge of the um, segment. So we have to go in and just uh, use a micro grasper, just release this um, as it's caught up in the segment. And this can occasionally happen and you can use micro graspers relatively easily to uh, readjust the position of the, the, the ring. You can see now the capsular bag is nicely centered and now we're going to place a single piece uh, Rayner hydrophobic lens um, into the capsular bag. Um, and the capsular bag is a little on the small side so what we do notice is that the haptics um, are not quite fully opened up but uh, this is not uh, usually an issue. Uh, and as the capsular axis is a little on the small side, we're just having to do a little bit of maneuvering uh, using a Kugelin hook uh, for counter pressure, counter pressure on the edge of the capsular bag. Um, and we um, get the lens uh, eventually into the capsular bag um, without a problem. Uh, once we've uh, got the lens well positioned, um, as you can see here, uh, we once again just center the lens up 
and uh, really tighten up the uh, suture here, place uh, our final knot, our locking knot, and then uh, trim the edges. And then we um, push the knot into the, the eye and make sure that it's nice and buried, as these can erode if this isn't the case. Um, and at the conclusion of the case, we close up the conjunctiva with some uh, Ato Vicryl. Um, and the lens is nicely centered. And we're just going to um, check um, the wounds here now with some uh, fluorescein um, after we've removed all of the viscoelastic. And I'm using a Simcoe to do this as this is uh, very controlled and very gentle. Um, and that uh, concludes the case, and we inject some antibiotics into the cul-de-sac. Thank you very much for your attention.